This might seem a little dramatic to some of you, but I kind of feel like I'm turning my back on one of my good friends from the past. It's kind of a weird feeling. An incredibly popular paint color that I've recommended to many different people. And now I find myself doing it less and less as time goes on. I wanna tell you why in 2023, I'm probably not going to recommend Repose Gray by Sherwin-Williams nearly as often as I used to. No, God, please, no, no! And there are a few reasons why. I guess I could start by talking about the color itself, which to me is really one of those quintessential, slightly warm, but not too warm, kind of mid-tone gray beige colors, which may seem a little more gray than you might expect. See, already I'm starting to confuse myself about this color. The thing is, when I used to work more regularly as a house painter, I would often find myself helping clients with color selection. My approach, especially when I was starting out, was really adopting this less is more, trim the fat approach, not necessarily to color palettes, but just color selection. I find the first thing the average customer would do is to go to the paint store and stare at that massive wall of a thousand or two colors, have their jaw drop through the floor, quite literally, and then proceed to pick a ton of grays, beiges, and grayges, only to bring those color chips home and to place them on their kitchen table, only to drown in a sea of frustration and desaturated disappointment. My approach was a little bit different though because I had been in so many different houses over the years and talked to so many different people about the kinds of colors that they gravitate towards. It allowed me to tap into my past experiences and perhaps start the whole color process in a more favorable position for the average client. And I do this in a rather simple way. Instead of starting with all of the neutrals and trying to find the perfect one, I maybe started with three neutrals instead. This allowed my customer to trim out all of that excess visual garbage that would just end up confusing them and really would make the whole process a lot more painful than it needs to be. Picking colors is fun after all, right? I mean, it should be at least, because if it isn't, then every time you look at those gray walls that you picked, you'll just remember all of the sleepless nights and all the fights you had with your significant other about which gray is more gray than the other. So where does this leave our pal Repose Gray? Well, to be frank, it usually ended up being one of those three neutrals that I would have recommended to people, especially if they were looking within that Sherwin-Williams catalog, and they were looking for maybe one of those slightly lighter mid-tone neutrals that you would use on your walls, something in the low 60s, high 50s LRV, meaning they sort of have a 60% lightness score, I guess you could say. Just a nice balance of color and lightness, so it shouldn't feel too light or too dark in most situations. So normally I show them Repose Gray, I might add agreeable gray, and then finally I'd hit them with accessible beige. And when you have the three colors next to one another, you do notice some similarities, but their differences become a little more clear right next to each other. Accessible beige is definitely the most beige of the bunch by bringing in some of that brownie tan warmth, but still pretty undersaturated as a whole. It's not like a Dijon mustard type of color, even though I love me some Harvest Gold. It's a mid-tone neutral beige, really. Repose Gray, on the other hand, feels a lot cooler in comparison, almost to the point where you start to see a little bit of green coming through. Now, no one, including a green lover, would call Repose Gray green, but it really hovers between cool and warm Warm, and it could appear pretty different in certain situations. And then that third neutral is kind of in the middle. It's agreeable gray, a happy medium between the two, I like to say. It's not necessarily an exact blend of the two colors because it's a little more brown leaning compared to beige. Essentially, I just use these colors as a starting point to help gauge which direction to go and whether it's more of a traditional, slightly cooler gray they're looking for or a warmer, maybe grayish color or maybe a beige, just a straight up beige. Once we would figure that out, then we can start to pivot one way or another. But at least you're starting with that solid foundation and you can just adjust from there. But now we're headed into 2023, y'all. And I'm pretty apprehensive about coercing people into using Repose Gray as one of their primary colors in their home. Not because I have anything against the color itself. I'm an equal opportunist paint color guy for the most part. But what we're really starting to see though is the shift away from cooler neutrals into more definitive, warmer ones. So that already puts Repose Gray in a slightly tricky situation, being the coolest 
warm-ish neutral, really. What it can do is it can sort of sit on the cusp of warm and cold temperature-wise, which means it'll be more susceptible to color shift, making it a little more unpredictable with whether you're going to get a straight up neutral gray or kind of a greeny color, or even a little bit of blue. No, oh, I'm afraid I just blew myself. <laughs> Believe me, all of this really hurts to say because Repose Gray remains one of the quintessential gray paint colors within interior design as a whole. It's technically awesome, and many people use it, have used it, will use it, but I think my biggest reason that I don't see myself recommending it as much is due to where color trends are headed as a whole. If you've been keeping tabs with the colors of the year, I mean, look no further than Sherwin-Williams itself. They picked Red End Point this time around, which is an earthy, almost clay-like brown color. Normally you would assume that it would look okay next to a neutral gray, like Repose Gray, but really, next to anything with a decent red undertone, Repose Gray becomes Repose greeny gray. That's the tricky part here because a lot of people have the expectation that because repose gray is so popular and so beloved within the industry that it's automatically going to be safe and an easy default choice for your home. And honestly, that's how I traded it for quite a while, especially when those cooler grays were cool. Cool. But like any paint color, it's not going to be the be all and end all automatic choice. If you're wanting to incorporate a lot of those really trendy terracotta clay, rose gold hues, they can really bring out the green in Repose Gray, which is a paint color you probably expected to just be gray. This video is not meant to disparage one of the tried and true colors that have added a lot to the world of interior and exterior design really, but I do feel a shift away from those cooler neutrals, even those right down the middle neutrals, in favor of colors with more warmth, more cozy and I guess more beige. Take what you want from it, it's just my opinion y'all. And as a last little love letter to Repose Gray, here's five color pairings that go really well with it, in case you're still bullish on this admittedly awesome paint color. 